Many thanks to PPA for sponsoring this week's video. Have you ever heard of something called the 10,000 hour rule? It basically states the way to achieve true expertise in any skill is simply a matter of practice. I'll, I'll be at 10,000 hours of practice. And after you spend these 10,000 hours working towards improvement, well, you pick up quite a few pieces of helpful information along the way, mainly from a, a great deal of trial and error, along with making mistakes and correcting mistakes. And my hope is that by the end of this video, I will have saved you at least a sizable portion of those 10,000 hours and have moved you much closer to that magic 10 grand figure of true expertise. So one of the biggest issues with photography and something that took me years to really figure out is that photography, well, it's a two-dimensional medium that's meant to be a graphical representation of the three-dimensional world we see with our naked eyes. So in layman's terms, photographs, whether they're viewed on a phone or a computer monitor or maybe hanging on a wall, are all completely flat and lack three dimension and depth. So to jump right into it, this is a perfect example of this. So this is a, an image from a, a recent trip to Olympic National Park, absolutely gorgeous waterfall, and a typical photo for me really, very underexposed, I usually always try and uh, protect the highlights, but almost all of my photographs really start out this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this raw file and we're gonna turn it into this right here. So we're gonna take it from this image here that lacks all dimension, there's no three dimension, there's no depth in this photograph, it's a very flat representation of this incredible waterfall, and we're gonna bring it to this right here in just a few simple steps. So one of my favorite things to do is when I start to edit a photograph is just to, to get the photograph to a point to where you can edit it. So just basically balancing out the exposure, and that's just not, it's not just the exposure uh, slider, it's exposure, it's the white point, it's the black point, it's your highlights, your shadows, it's everything. So I just wanna go ahead and just balance things out just so I can start doing the edit. So I'm just gonna run through this portion really quickly. So I'm gonna come up here to the, the basic section. We're gonna bring this exposure up a fair amount to maybe about right there. Let's add a little bit of global contrast to about there. We're gonna bring the highlights down a touch, maybe about to this point, I think right there looks pretty good. Let's bump up these shadows a fair amount. I'm gonna bring some of that detail there. I wanna bring up this black point also a fair amount as well. I think into somewhere, I think that's a good starting point. I'm gonna bring up this white point a little bit as well. Just a, just a small amount to I think about there. That looks pretty good. As you can see, the, the mid-tones area of the photograph is, is very flat. It's very uh, squished. There's not a lot of detail there. A great way to bring back that information is this here. Since there isn't a mid-tone slider inside of Lightroom, I'm gonna come down here to the color grading section. Make sure that I have mid-tone selected, which it is here. And this luminance slider, so as you bring, rock this back and forth, if you look at the, the mid-tones area of the histogram, you can see that that is really the area that's being impacted the most. So I'm gonna bring this up a fair amount to maybe about right there, I think looks pretty good. And then last but not least, I always like to kind of just soften down the overall photograph, bring the clarity down a touch, bring down a little bit of this dehaze. I find dehaze just kind of softens things down just a touch. Plus it's gonna to add to a little bit of this um, natural waterfall spray that's happening right through here. As I rock this back and forth, you can see the area that would be impacted by that. So I'm gonna bring it to a point to maybe about right here. So now that the photograph is at a point, is at a portion or is that a, is that a, a place in time, if you will, that you can begin to start editing the photograph. Now what I want to do is just kind of take myself back in time to when I was on location and really kind of pay attention. And I always do this when I'm on location, take these kind of mental notes of where things are happening because a lot of times the light that you experience on location doesn't always come through in the end result. This is a perfect example of it. There was so much of this beautiful light that was coming through the background right through here. And I really want to bring that back because Whenever you can have a light source in the rear of your photograph, that's fantastic because the human eye is always gonna go towards the brightest area of a photograph. And if that happens to be in the rear of your photograph, well, you guess it, now you're taking the viewer's eye all the way through your photograph and that's a great way to create that depth and three dimension of a scene. So I'm gonna bring that back now and a great technique is to come up here to the filters. I'm gonna hit radial gradient. I'm gonna make the image a little bit smaller here because I'm gonna make a, a huge radius across this area bring it over here just a touch. I want it to be a very soft transition, so I'm gonna bring this feather. I don't want it to be super abrupt like that. I want it to be very gradual, so I'm gonna put it at uh, 100. I think I'm gonna make it 
even a little bit larger, stretch it out here. I wanna make sure that the upper left-hand area is receiving more of that because this area was more in shadow. And from here, I'm gonna bring the exposure up a fair amount. Let's, uh, do we wanna do anything with the contrast? Yeah, I think I'm gonna bring the contrast up some. I'm gonna bring the highlights down a little bit. Whenever you brighten an area with exposure, you wanna make sure you're not blowing out those highlights or overexposing those highlights at all. Um, the shadows, I definitely wanna open those up a little bit more. So I'm thinking somewhere about maybe here it looks good. Anything with the whites, just maybe just a touch, maybe a little bit more than a touch there. I think that that's starting to look pretty good. Um, I'm gonna bring these highlights down a little bit more as well. Do we wanna do anything with the black point? Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit. And then I'm gonna bring, uh, I'm gonna come down here to clarity because I'm gonna soften down that area a little bit more, negative dehaze. And then we're gonna warm it up just a little bit. Nothing crazy, but that area was illuminated by sunlight and the sunlight was warm. So maybe something, eh, not quite that much. I think that looks pretty good. Let's make it a little bit larger on the screen once again, not that big. Come up here to fit. That's the easiest way. And now let's toggle this on and off. That's before and after, before and after. And you can really see that that brought back a lot of that kind of depth to the overall photograph because now there is an area of the scene for the viewer's eye to kind of latch onto. So the viewer's eye more than likely will end in this region of the photograph. But we also have the ability to determine exactly where the viewer's eye begins and begins this, I guess, optical journey, if you will. And an, a great way to do that is by darkening down areas that you don't want the viewer's eye to pay attention to and brightening the areas of the photograph you do want the viewer's eye to focus on. So what I want to do, and as you can see, the areas of natural shadow are the, the bottom left-hand corner, the bottom right-hand corner, and the upper right-hand corner. Now I could go over here or come down to the bottom, close this down, and go to the, where are you, effect section, and go to the vignette. We could just darken that down here. And yeah, that's doing, and you know, for the most part, what we want it to do, but it's also darkening down this area up through here, which we definitely don't want to do that. So what you can do is something that's called a, or I call it a, a custom vignette, by using a radio gradient and just inverting it. So I'm gonna come up here to the filters, create new filter, radio gradient, and make the image smaller on the screen once again. We're gonna draw a large radius across the entire scene, and the trick is to invert it. And now er everything in red is going to receive that edit. I'm gonna soften down this feather a little bit to maybe about right there. Let's make this a little bit larger here. And the beauty of a custom vignette is I can now come up here to subtract with the brush and I can just paint away the areas or the corners that I don't want to affect. So up through here, I don't wanna affect this area as much. And that's the beauty of a custom vignette is you have total control. So now I can go ahead and I can make any kind of adjustments to that area. So I think I'm gonna bring it down a fair amount to about right here, I think. I'm gonna bring that black point up just a little bit because I don't want the, the blacks to get too, too dark. So maybe something like this. Let's toggle this on and off. So this is before and after. I think we're gonna have to bring it down a little bit more. So once again, this is before and after before and after, and you can definitely see that that kind of just brought, let me open it up a little bit bigger here, just kind of draws the viewer's eye into the photograph a little bit more and not so much to this area right through here. So now you've kind of got this brighter area all throughout this photograph. So once again, oops, I had this turned off. So now you can really tell the difference. And if we toggle all the masks on and off, so this is before and after, before and after, and now the overall photograph is starting to get a little bit more depth to the overall scene got a brighter area in the background, you got darker areas on the corners a little bit, so they're starting to get a little bit more of that optical journey or that, that, uh, that path that we want the viewer's eye to follow. It's starting to become a little bit more clear. So what I wanna do now is I wanna figure out exactly, you know, what are some other areas of the scene that I really want the viewer's eye to pay attention to that could complement this overall composition? But real quick, I just wanna thank the sponsor of this week's video, which is Professional Photographers of America, or PPA for short. Now, I know I've mentioned this on quite a few occasions over the years, but one of the top reasons why I'm a member of PPA is their straightforward approach to insuring my camera gear. They offer up to $15,000 worth of coverage with a $50 deductible for repairs and a $350 deductible for 
full replacement of equipment loss. This gives me the peace of mind knowing my gear is protected not only from damage, but also theft or any other unforeseen event that may occur. And with your PPA membership, you'll also receive data loss negligence, malpractice protection with PPA's indemnification trust, along with customizable contracts and price lists, and even a first year pass to Imaging USA, which is the largest photographic event of the year. So join a community of over 35,000 photographers and check out the link in the description below for a special discount on your PPA membership today. So I'm just gonna kind of survey the scene here, figure out exactly what I think looks best. What are the, some areas of the photograph that really jump out to me? This log was definitely an area that I, I really enjoyed. You can see that this area is being illuminated by a little bit of light that was coming through here. This area is not, however. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna add a new mask. I think we're gonna do a radial gradient. So I'm gonna draw a radius right along here, a skinny one. We're gonna turn it on its side here. We're gonna bring it to about here. I think we need to tighten it up just a little bit more. Make that feather a little bit softer. And let's bring up the exposure. And then nothing crazy, but maybe about right here. Let's stretch it out a little bit, make it a little bit larger. And I think that might be a little bit overdone. But what's so cool is like when you look at it right now, it doesn't really look like we did much, but when you toggle this on and off, you can really, really see the difference. So I'll come up here and that's before and after, before and after. That might be overdone just a touch. But what that's gonna do is that is gonna give the viewer's eye maybe an area to start the, you know, like I guess foreground interest, if you will. That log is definitely obviously in the foreground and it is interesting but by making it stand out a little bit more on that one side, maybe the viewers, viewer will pay attention to that and that might be one of the things that draws their eye to first in the overall photograph and then kind of lead their eye through the, uh, the remainder of the scene. So what I wanna do is I wanna brighten up this area right through here because this is something that I thought was really cool. I love these three rocks right through here, kind of leads the viewer's eye from here all the way up to the scene. So I'm gonna draw another radial gradient all the way across the scene here. We're gonna make it tall. We're gonna turn it on its side. We're gonna bring it to it like this. Maybe not quite that big, but something I believe to about here. Looks pretty good. And we'll just brighten that up some to about there. Once again, we're gonna bring those highlights down a little bit because we brought up that exposure a fair amount. We wanna make sure that we're not blowing those out at all. And when I toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done. It really brought a lot of attention to that area. And once again, that might be just a little bit overdone. But finally, what I wanna do now is we brighten up this area. We have this area here that's brightened up. This area is brightened. This area, whole side is dark and this side is dark. And we're getting that, that, that path for the viewer's eye to follow is really starting to come into play. Because if you remember when this image started in its raw state, besides it being completely underexposed, there was no interesting light. It was a completely flat photograph, but now we're starting to bring that three-dimensional feeling back into the scene. And this final uh, filter that we're gonna apply here is really gonna finish it off. So what we wanna do is we wanna brighten up this area right through here because it's a little bit darker because the viewer's eye, you know, we, we brightened up this area, we brightened up this area and this area, but this area is a little bit darkened, so it kind of stops that path or that journey. So I'm gonna add one more mask, radial gradient, I'm gonna draw it right through here, put it on its side, open it up just a little bit more, and drag it out to about right here. I'm gonna bring this exposure up a fair amount. I'm going to bring up the highlights and I'm gonna bring down the shadows, this kind of natural dodging and burning. And if we toggle this on and off, you can see what that has done. And I'm gonna to toggle all of these masks on and off now. So this is before, after we went ahead and balanced the overall scene, you can see that there's there's just not a lot of interesting light anywhere in this photograph. It is very, very flat. But now you can see that it really brought back a lot of that depth, a lot of that scene, or I should say a lot of that, um, that, uh, that kind of journey of the overall photograph. And the photograph feels much more con contained because I feel like the viewer's eye a lot of times naturally has a tendency to kind of spill outside of the photograph. That's why, that's really the purpose of a vignette. Darken down the corners, leave the center of your scene brighter, draw the viewer's eye into the center of your photograph. And in my personal opinion, the longer you can keep the viewer's eye in the center of the photograph, the longer you're gonna be able to keep them obviously viewing your scene. So that's what I always like to do is darken down areas that are not super interesting, brighten up areas that are interesting to kind of contain the viewer's eye inside of your photograph. And I think we did a really good job. Now this area here, those highlights definitely seem to be a little bit too bright now for me. I'm gonna bring down the whites a little bit. But once you go through this process, you'll see that 
you'll, it's, you'll notice areas that maybe you think are a little bit uh, too dark and you might wanna brighten them up or you might find areas of your scene that are a little bit too bright. Maybe you wanna darken them down a little bit. But when you start to edit your photograph, just bringing your overall scene to a balanced exposure, that's the starting out point. And then once you start to manipulate these filters and using radial filters in certain areas of your photograph to adjust light and to direct that viewer's attention to certain areas of your scene and create that more dynamic lighting scenario, that really adds a lot more, I guess, visual interest to a photograph versus the way that I used to do it, which would basically just do all of the edits without any filters and I would be left with something that looks like this, which a few years ago, I thought that would look absolutely fantastic, but just these subtle tweaks right here really adds a lot of visual interest to this overall photograph, and it just ultimately improves the overall scene, in my opinion. So that is a process that I go through on just about every single photograph now, and I really think it has enhanced my photography over the last few years, and I wanted to, to make sure I share that with you as well. If you have any questions about this week's video, please leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. And uh, oh, definitely check out the link in the description below for additional information regarding a PPA membership. And I really do, as always, appreciate you checking out this week's video. If you enjoyed it, if you could, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, thank you so much for carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.